What is Time Traveller? Time Traveller is a steel-launched spinning roller coaster located at Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri, USA. You heard that right, a launched spinning coaster. In fact, a multi-launched spinning coaster, as guests are accelerated to a high top speed twice during the ride, but it gets better. Time Traveller also became the world's first spinning roller coaster to feature multiple inversions, allowing guests to be turned upside down three times during the layout or while they spin freely in circles. The idea to marry a thrilling launch coaster and spinning coaster came from the manufacturer of Time Traveller, Muck Rides. It all started in 1997 when Muck opened their first spinning coaster, Euromir at Europa Park. Euromir debuted as the world's tallest, fastest and longest spinning roller coaster at the time, but unlike other spinning rides, it featured trains with controlled spinning. This meant that motors were used to alter the rotation of the trains at specific moments during the experience. Sadly, the model saw very little success. That was until 2007, when Muckride sold a new spinning coaster to Knott's Berry Farm, Sierra Sidewinder. It became the first coaster by the company to feature free spinning trains, meaning the rotation was not controlled and the trains were able to spin freely under the forces experienced during the ride. Two years later, in 2009, Muck Rides and Europa Park opened Bluefire, a large launch coaster featuring multiple inversions. The ride marked the company's progression into the thrill coaster market, a step up from their previous family-friendly designs. Since the debut of their launch coaster, the German company has gone on to produce many around the world, such as the highly regarded double launch coaster, Helix. The marriage of these two models occurred in 2014. A young engineer at Muck Rides suggested combining their two models to create something new and unique. Thus, the extreme spinning coaster was born. Initially, however, the CEO of Mac, Christian von Elverfeld, was skeptical of the idea. Nevertheless, the amusements manufacturer tested the concept to see if it was viable. In 2015, a free spinning car was designed and placed onto Bluefire, Mac's debut launch coaster. After numerous rides, it was found to be too intense for the company's liking. They didn't want to emulate the teacup sensation many spinning coasters exhibited. Instead, the idea was to have the train spin just enough to provide a new and exciting sensation. To achieve this, the manufacturer incorporated a magnetic brake into the car's design. A circular disc, which spun as the cars did, was sandwiched between a pair of magnets. As the disc spun, it created its own magnetic field, repelling that of the magnets, slowing the rotation of the train. This meant that the cars could still rotate freely under gravity, but their rotation would be dampened by the magnets. Meanwhile, at roughly the same time, Pete and Jack Hirschend were trying to figure out what was next for their park, Silver Dollar City. The pair were looking for a unique ride, something new to the United States, and ideally a world's first. By chance, the company became interested in Bluefire and began discussions with Muck Rides. During this, Jane Cooper, the president and chief operating officer of Hershey Entertainment, the company that owns Silver Dollar City, was presented with Mac's unlikely marriage. Though, she too was initially skeptical of the idea, quoting it to be a potentially risky investment. After viewing what the product could look like, the park determined that they needed to test the ride system before making a final decision. In January of 2016, Silver Dollar City's president, Brad Thomas, and Jane Cooper both visited Europa Park. Upon experiencing the modified version of Bluefire, the pair were sold on the idea. After a few more trips to Germany to figure out benchmarking and logistics, the world's first extreme spinning coaster was born. By this point in time, Hershen's creative and marketing teams were already busy working on potential names for the new attraction. During a third visit to Europa Park, Thomas and Cooper reviewed a list of 10 potential names while in the Bluefire station. Though the pair decided none of them worked, Thomas did notice that the car of the ride looked like some sort of time machine. Minutes later, the ride's name, Time Traveler, was conceived. Though, that wasn't initially loved either. The pair pitched a steampunk theme inspired by Jules Verne to the park's team and were met with negative thoughts. But after some research, the name was chosen and the park got to work. Construction began in October 2016 and just under 12 months later, in August 2017, the ride was revealed to the public. Time Traveler's track was officially completed in September of 2017, ready to open at the start of the new season. 
After years of development and construction, Silver Dollar City's new attraction debuted to the public on the 14th of March 2018 at the staggering cost of 26 million US dollars. In the end, Silver Dollar City settled for a theme related to the ride's name. The story has been created around the fictional character Charles Henry, who has inherited his family's clockmaking business. Henry has become fascinated by the notion of time and how each minute provides another opportunity to make the world a better place. He decides that he wants to build a time machine to undo the mistakes of the past in order to create a better future for everyone. Through the mantra, dream big, do good, and the support of his daughter, the clockmaker sets out to build a time machine. As guests walk up to the ride for the first time, they instantly get an idea of the theme. The huge entrance sign, which resembles a large clock and its accompanying mechanism, stands proud outside of the attraction. After guests enter the queue line, they find themselves walking into the roller coaster's three-story station building. On the bottom floor, guests see punch cards and an employee clock as they become volunteers at Henry's clockmaking business. The middle floor features the company's offices and a whole range of clock components currently in assembly. Finally, on the top floor, guests make their way towards the boarding platform as they've been given a chance to experience Henry's new time-traveling machine. Huge cogs and gears dominate the space, while smaller versions spin on the ceiling. It's here that guests come face to face with the ride's vehicles. Each one resembles time travel machines, complete with cogs and other steampunk elements. The trains themselves are made up of four cars, each of which seat visitors facing opposite directions in two rows of two. This leads to a total of 16 riders per train. Guests then board the ride vehicles, which feature over-the-shoulder lap bar restraints. Once ready, the trains are dispatched from the station building and the ride instantly begins. Guests encounter a set of magnets immediately after the station, which causes the trains to spin. Riders then begin to descend the first drop. Guests slowly crest the top of the 27-meter, 90-foot drop, being slowed down by magnetic brake fins in the process. But it isn't long before they plummet down the 90-degree fall and begin to traverse their first inversion, a dive loop. The trains then whip to the left before completing a beyond 180-degree turn into the start of the first launch. Here, riders slow down and come to a stop. Seconds later, guests are accelerated from 0 to 76 kilometers per hour, 46 miles per hour, in 3 seconds through the use of linear synchronous motors, LSMs. This propels the trains directly into a large stall turn. Guests then dive back towards the ground and reach the attraction's top speed of 81 kilometers per hour, 50.3 miles per hour. The trains then enter the ride's second inversion, the vertical loop, a 95 foot tall loop. After, visitors climb into an S-hill, traverse a bank drop to the right, and fly through the attraction's third and final inversion, a zero-g roll. An upward bank climb to the left sees guests enter the second launch. Here, they're accelerated from 48 km per hour to 72 km per hour, 30 miles per hour to 45 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds. The trains then climb into an overbank turn to the right before falling back towards the ground. The ride comes to an end with an upward bank turn to the left, leading visitors into the final brake run. During the entire experience, which lasts for 82 seconds from the moment the trains leave the station to when they hit the final brake run, riders navigate 920 meters, 3,020 feet of track. Thankfully for the president of Hirsch End Entertainment, Time Traveler has been a success. Many praise the ride's unique nature, quoting it to be a perfect attraction for all the family. The inversions draw the attention of thrill seekers, while the comfortable and smooth ride keeps younger guests happy. On top of all this, the spinning nature of the trains provide an unlimited number of different experiences. Simply put, no two rides will ever be the same. Interestingly, the rate at which guests spin during the layout can be changed on demand. The magnets surrounding the metal disc which controls the rotation can be moved to make guests spin more or less, allowing it to be adjusted based on weather conditions. By doing this, muck rides were able to create a large-scale spinning coaster with just the right level of intensity. In fact, Time Traveler currently resides as the world's tallest, steepest, and fastest full-circuit spinning coaster. The appeal of a looping spinning coaster has already caught the interest of other theme parks too. A second Muck Rides Extreme Spinning Coaster will be built in 2021 at Plopsaland de Pan in Belgium. 
Similar to Time Traveller, it'll feature two launches as well as a whole host of inversions and other exciting elements. If you've ridden Time Traveller, what do you think of it? Is the spinning too much or just the right amount? For those who haven't ridden, would you like to? Let us know in the comments down below. Anyway, thank you for watching and we'll see you all next time. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and pressing the bell icon below.